So we know that the area under the curve for any function is given by the integral, which we take by approximating Riemann sums with infinite rectangles. But let's see what we can really do with this understanding of the integral. First, let's consider two curves and find the area in between them. Take a function f of x is equal to x, and take another function g of x is equal to x squared. Now I want you to try and find the area between these curves using your knowledge of calculus. Well, this area visually is simply the difference between the area under the curve of f of x on 0 to 1, denoted by this blue triangle, and it's the area under the curve of g of x equals x squared. The difference of these two areas will give that yellow region, and these areas are denoted by integrals, the integral of these functions on 0 to 1. And so computing the difference between these integrals will give us the area between these two curves, which is going to turn out to be 1 over 6. And so if f of x is the top function, then this is how the order will go. And vice versa. If g of x is on top, then g of x will be the original difference. However, if you want a general form, then you can simply take the absolute value of their differences and you will get the same answer. You can also take the integrals and find the areas with respect to y. Now let's reorient this problem and ask ourselves the problem in a different method. So we can take the top function as g inverse of y, root y, this portion of the area, and subtract the one to the left of it. So it's really right minus left instead of top minus bottom. And these integrals are just taken with respect to y. And once again, you can do this very easily and you will still get to the same answer of one over six. So you can integrate in a different perspective. So if the inverse function is on the right, that's going to be the quote unquote top function. And same for the case where g inverse of y is on top or on the right. And of course, the absolute value definition remains the same for this question. Consider the function f of x is equal to the square root of x. Take the area under the curve from 0 to 1, revolve it around the x-axis, and now ask yourself what the volume of this solid would be. Well, we can take Riemann sum partitions and revolve individual rectangles around the x-axis. You will notice that if we took an individual rectangle here revolved around the x-axis, it is in the shape of a cylinder with a radius given by the function value and the height given by the arbitrarily small change in x. So using the formula for a volume of a cylinder, we can represent the change in volume as pi times the function value squared dx. We can integrate both sides to get the total volume of this solid, and now all we have to do is use this formula to solve the volume of this solid, plugging in f of x is equal to root x, and solving this definite integral to get pi over 2 as the volume. Now let's combine these concepts and take an outer function of f of x equals root x, g of x equals x over 2. The area between those curves is now going to be revolved. And now let's find the volume. Well, this is going to be the outer function's revolution volume subtracted by the inner function's revolution volume, as you see follows. Compute these integrals separately and taking their difference will result in our final desired volume. And in this case, we will result in 5 pi over 12. Let's take the function f of x is equal to root x one last time for our final case and let this be the base of a solid. Now we can make the cross sectionals to be any shape. Let's choose a square and ask what the volume of such a solid is. If we partition rectangular prisms where we have a side of a 
square, well, we know that the area or the volume of this prism is just the function value squared times dx. So if we want to find the volume, right, all we have to do is integrate that, which was the change in the volume. If the cross-sectionals were equilateral triangles, well, we simply just change the formula for what the shape area would be. So we can take an equilateral triangle, notice that the side is just f of x, the height is f of x root 3 over 2, and dx is the small width or change in x. And remember that the formula for an area of a triangle is root 3 over 4 side squared if it's equilateral, where s or the side is f of x. So the volume is just given by the integral of this formula. Now, in general, let's say we knew that the area of some shape let's say a star, was given by some formula. If we knew what that formula was, what you would notice that it is always going to be the case that the solid has a volume proportional to the function value squared in most cases, where k denotes some constant, which was root 3 over 4 for an equilateral triangle and 1 for a rectangular prism or a cube or whatever you would like to call it. This is one for a circle, and you can understand generally that this is mostly true. And yes, of course, if you have two curves, there is a case here where you have a cross-sectional of two curves, but the idea remains the same. You would just take the outer area cross-sectional volume and subtract it by the inner, so top minus bottom, and of course, you could change your perspective in the Y world. So let's review the formulas for the three cases. For the disk method, remember that it is simply the area between two curves where f and g are going to be subtracted from each other and f is the top function. For a volume of a revolution, it's pi times the integral from a to b of the function value squared. And the volume of some cross section is just the integral of the area function where the area could be the area formula for a square, a circle, triangle or whatever you could possibly imagine so as you see here and in this case where you would plug in f of x would be things like radius or side or base and etc